Hey, how you doing? Justin here. Today we're going to talk about using your thumb to mute the thicker strings on the guitar where they should be muted. Now, up to this point in my beginner's journey, I've recommended that you keep your thumb at the back of the neck. And the reason for that is because I really want you to build up this muscle here between your thumb and your first finger because it's what you need for playing bar chords. However, the longer I play, the more I tend to play with my thumb hanging around over the top and it's got quite a few uses. Probably the most valuable of which is muting the thicker string. So what I want to do is take you through some of the common chord shapes and explain a little bit about how the hand position works and stuff like that. Uh, it's not the kind of thing that you feel like you have to do, but at least being aware of it, if you start to do it, then you understand what's happening. And it can be, there's some advantages to learning to play with the thumb over the top, particularly if you get into blues and rock and you're doing things like string bending where the thumb has to come over. If you've got some experience maybe having it over the top for uh, muting strings, which is what we're predominantly going to be covering today, then it could be pretty useful. Of course, we've already covered using it as a bass note for like D with an F sharp bass. So maybe you've had a little bit of a go at reaching it around the top. But in this lesson, we're going to go through it all in a little bit more detail. As well as this camera that I'm talking to now and my little close-up camera here, I'm also going to be using my iPhone to give you a good view of what it looks like from the back of the neck too, which I think makes a big difference. So we're going to start off with an A chord and looking at that. So here's a beginner's version of an A chord. You can see their thumb nicely positioned, not right over the top, but not right at the back either, sort of in that, you know, three quarter zone. Their fingers are all in a nice place. And the thumb is unable to mute the thicker string where it is now. Now, the thicker string there doesn't want to ring out on an A chord. And if you reach your thumb around like that and just touch it, it only has to just touch it. It doesn't have to like reach around and grab a hold of it like that. It just has to touch it. Now, maybe you remember how difficult it was to get all of the notes ringing out clearly when you were first learning your chords, that the slightest touch on a string means that that string doesn't ring out. And that's an advantage here because the thumb literally just has to touch it a tiny bit and it's going to mute that thicker string on your A chord, which is really good. But what I want to point out here particularly is the shape of the hand and how it sits. Now, when you play with your thumb positioned around the back, you see that there's a little gap there between the hand and the fretboard. It's not directly touching. But what you'll find when you start using your thumb to come over is that you wrap the thumb around a bit more and now there's no gap there, uh, particularly when you're holding the cord like that. It is quite a firm grip. Now, uh, one of the ways that I often kind of make a joke about this is that you're holding it a bit like a bat and you can actually hold the whole guitar like that and you see it, I'm still holding my A chord. In fact, I can still even probably play. If I turn the volume up. I can play the A chord and I'm holding on like that because the grip of the hand around the neck. And it is still, if I just uh, get that picked down, it's not holding it with the. Oh, thank you, Ziggy. Um, I'm not holding it like that where the, th where the whole flat of the hand is resting on the neck. It is literally just the, the kind of the cup, the arch part between my thumb and my first finger that wraps all of the way around. And that's where the grip is. You don't need to hold it like this, kind of like, like you're gripping it like you're holding it to carry it. Okay, it doesn't want to be like that. It wants to just be that part near your thumb and your first finger that holds onto the strings and forms the cord in. And the thumb is literally just reaching around the top. It doesn't want to reach around. It doesn't need to do that. It just needs to touch that little bit again you know, as you get better, you'll realize exactly how much touch needs to go down there to not play the note, but to mute the string. There might be occasions where the flat of your palm touches the neck, but for the most part, particularly with chords, you don't want it to do that. So you just want that little bit between the thumb and the first finger. Now, this shape of the hand is the same for most A chords. So whether it's an A or an A minor or an A7 or an A7 like that, Whatever the chord is, it's likely that the thumb is going to be roughly around the second fret. It is worth pointing out that we are all anatomically different. So you might find that your thumb is a little bit closer toward the first fret or a little bit further, but it's most likely going to be hanging around the second fret somewhere. So now let's talk about muting the thicker string on a D chord. And we've mentioned a few times that if you've got a D chord, it should be the thinnest four strings. But if you hit the fifth string, it kind of sounds okay, but the thicker string open, it's just really not a great sound there to go along with our D chord. 
the reason is that it's a D chord, the thicker string is the note E, and it's too D to E, it's too close together for it to have any kind of use, really. Um, so getting the thumb over to mute that string is a really great idea, because it means that you can then strum pretty freely. And if you're hitting accidentally the fifth string, that's fine, that's not going to sound bad at all. You've got rid of that, you know, the bad, the one real bad note there. Um, if you've got any experience with uh, playing the D with the F sharp, maybe you've just come off my lesson on slash chords. The next step is to figure out how much pressure you need to make the note and how much pressure you need to just mute the string. Because the position is going to be quite similar, it's just a little bit more grabby, it just requires a little bit more pull and you're kind of pulling backwards a little bit to pull the string there, pull the, pull the string down onto the fret there when you want it that low note ring out. Just relaxing it that little bit makes it muted. Now this same idea goes right across if you've got a D minor, again muting that thicker string or a D7. Okay, so just exploring how the thumb feels like that with those chords, because it will feel different if you're used to playing with your thumb around the back for those chords. As soon as you get that thumb around and you're more connected to the neck, it will feel different, hopefully in a good way. Everyone feels a little different about trying this for the first time. Some people absolutely love it, like their hands seem built for this kind of playing and, and it feels really natural. I found it a real struggle. I didn't get on with it at all. I, just reaching around with the thumb to get those notes was just... I found it very, very difficult. It took a lot of practice. Probably wasn't helped by learning it on a nylon string guitar, which at the neck is quite a lot wider than on an electric guitar, so I kind of wish I'd got into it on the electric guitar instead. But So if you're playing a nylon string, you will find this significantly harder, unless you've got enormous hands. Uh, acoustic guitar should be okay, regular steel string acoustic guitar, that's only a little bit wider than electric guitar. Um, but you, you know, don't be surprised if you find it pretty tricky, if it feels really different, because the whole hand position is, will feel very foreign holding it that way, and uh, it takes a bit of time and effort to, to naturalize it, to make it start to feel more comfortable under your fingers. So you are going to have to spend a bit of time with it, working on it, feeling it out, trying to figure out where the hand's going to sit that feels natural for you. Let's have a little chat about G shape now. Um, there's not that much use for thumb here because we're playing the thicker string anyway, so it's not like we want it there hanging around. If it's hanging about, that's kind of okay, particularly if you're changing to other chords and the thumb's hanging around anyway. I don't think you necessarily need to put it around the back for the G chord, but it's not going to be as functional in a G chord. I have seen people playing a G chord, like John Mayer does it a few times where he'll play a G chord and do fancy stuff on the top with the fingers while the thumb plays the G note. That might be something that you find useful at some point in your journey, but it wouldn't be the regular way of playing the G. And that's kind of more what I'm dealing with in this lesson. So if your thumb wants to hang around when you're playing a G chord, that's fine, but it's probably not going to be a practically useful one in that circumstance. And next up we have C chord. Now C chord, you should be muting the thicker string with the tip of your third finger. So again, thumb's not really going to be that useful here. It doesn't hurt for it to be hanging around and touching the thicker string on a C chord, so you've got, kind of got you know extra insurance if your third finger doesn't quite make the grade there and, and mute the string, but Again, for a C chord, it feels a little bit clumsy having the thumb wrapped right around. Um, again, it's, a lot of this is kind of up to your anatomy, how long your fingers are, how they feel, how dexterous they are, and it'll probably change as you change as a guitar player as well. But definitely have, have a little go. Go from the C chord with the thumb around the back and then just kind of wrap it around a little bit, see how it feels, see what works. Do some changes going C to G. Does it work like that? Actually, for me, definitely it's better for having the thumb as far as how easy the change is. But then if I'm going to a D with an F sharp, I might end up having the thumb hanging around just because it makes all of the other transitions kind of feel easier. And I want as little movement as I possibly can as I'm doing my different chord changes. So a little bit of this is going to be circumstance as well, what the chord is before, what the chord is afterwards. And there isn't one set one that you have to use all the time. So you need to kind of remove that bit of brainwashing where you think that it's like every time it has to be exactly in this place. It's not. It's going to change all the time. And that's totally fine. There aren't any set exercises to practice this, but what I would suggest you do is spend some time experimenting with the way that you play each of your open chords, especially as a kind of a long-term thing. 
Whenever you're playing a new song, have a look at what the chords are, have a look at where the hand is sitting. Experiment with muting the thicker string, particularly if you find it a problem. If you're playing a D chord and you often find yourself hitting that thicker string and it sounds bad, then you might want to hurry up with trying to get that thumb around to mute it. If you've been a bit more accurate with your picking, then you might not be so worried about it. It's something that's probably going to come. The longer you play for, the more useful it becomes to be able to get the thumb around to either mute notes or play notes. You know, a lot further on down the way, you're very likely to be using the thumb over. Instead of having to play bar chords all the time, you can use your thumb. Uh, you quite often use it for muting lines when you play single lines as well, if you're playing a lot of muted stuff. Uh, more advanced techniques that you're not going to encounter straight away, but I don't think it's a bad idea to start making a little bit of an approach toward it now and trying it out, seeing what works for you, particularly with the muted strings for open chords. It's a really valuable technique for beginners bridging the kind of gap into intermediate and bar chords. So give it some practice, see what works for you, and I really hope that it helps tidy up your playing if you've had any open strings that have been ringing out when you didn't want them to. I'll see you for plenty more very soon. Y'all take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.